Give me an anvil. There it is. Yeah! Ow! That's what I'm talking about! Hey! Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, in case you can't tell, I just got back from the US of A. So I was indeed in the US of A. Now I am gonna be looking for some flat steel because in my short brief time in the States there, uh, of course I found myself a nice good Stetson to wear. So part of today's video is indeed gonna be doing a Q&A because I got back yesterday and uh, we need to make some content nice and quick. And of course, we're also gonna be making a hat rack for my pickup truck for my new Stetson. Yes sir, indeed. So we've cut this material, and now let me describe a little bit about what it is that I'm talking about with a hat rack. When you get in your truck, you sometimes can't drive real easily because the back of your hat hits your, hits your car seat there. And so it's nice to have a way of stowing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a hook, essentially, that'll allow me to slip my cowboy hat in like this and easily pull it out the whole while without damaging the curves and the nice kind of creases of the cowboy hat. That's obviously very important. So this is the brim of our hat, and this is the crown of our hat. Looking at it this way, what we want is two tines that'll follow the crown around. That's a pretty nice drawing, isn't it, Jamie? It's fabulous. It is fabulous indeed. Looking for our sidewards elevation, it's simply just gonna look like a U. And looking at it without the hat there, it's gonna look a little like a uh, pitchfork with a bend right about there. So I have a piece of 5 eighths by, I would say about an eighth inch or so material, 16 mil by three millimeter material. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one very long chisel cut and forge those tines down so that we have a nice and neat prong for the hat before we get onto anything else. So while I start laying out my chisel line here for the tines, Brian Hamer has asked, as we said, we're doing a little bit of a question and answer in today's video. Brian Hamer has asked, do I have any tips on establishing and judging proper anvil height? In fact, I do. And the best tip that I can give is as follows. When you're working, doing general work for your anvil, you want to be able to put the piece of steel between your legs. So you don't want the anvil to be too high that you can't put the piece of steel between your legs unless you're doing really specific work. Ultimately, the anvil height has to suit the work that you're doing for general work where you're working with a hand hammer. You might do a little light work. You might do a little heavy work. A pretty good measure of the right height is when you stand up straight your fingers or your knuckles are just dragging across the anvil and you can still fit the piece between your legs. What you want is when you're working, you can get the full swing of the hammer without having to completely lock out your elbow, but you can still use your legs, your third hand, the blacksmith's third hand, to hold on to things and work with these two hands free. There's another interesting thing though. Jamie just stood at the anvil and was doing the same thing. Jamie's a few inches taller than me and his knuckles drag at the same height as mine. The reason I point it out is oftentimes anvil heights are pretty consistent even when there are disparities in heights of the person that's working at it. And it tends to be between 30, 32 inches is where most people, you know, unless if they have really long or really short arms, need to be with their anvil. Blake has asked me, what is the one tool that I could not live without? And indeed, that would have to be the three and a half, three and a half pound square circle rounding hammer. I just love this thing. It's a really, really nice weight for doing the general work. You can do a lot of heavy work, you can do a lot of light work. And here's the greatest thing, as I've said before, the great thing about blacksmithing is when you have problems, you solve them with hammers. When I got problems, I solve it with this. M. Ludwigsen asks, where do I keep the uh, samurai steel box that, uh, that he made the box, I made the hinges? It's actually it, uh, at my home, and it's looking very beautiful and majestic there. What was the very first thing you ever forged? The very first thing I ever forged was some little tiny chain links, I believe. And I then tried to make a leaf, and I messed up and the leaf spun up and hit me in the face. And I think if we look closely enough, we're still gonna be able to see the scar where it hit me on this side of my lip, I think. I'm chiseling over this uh, piece of mild steel plate here, because this means I can be up at my normal height, cut straight through, 
without having to uh, worry about damaging my anvil or my chisel because it'll just go straight into the mild steel, keep the chisel edge nice and keen. We're now just gonna open up our chisel, chisel crotch and we'll start cleaning it all up. Okay, so now we're gonna measure off where our brim comes to. And just like on the hooks that we made a few episodes ago, we're gonna use a fuller to damage the structural integrity of the piece so we can get an isolated bend. I'll also lay out where we're gonna be putting some holes. Raising Supergirls asks about my opinion on modern versus traditional blacksmithing. Well, my opinion is really kind of simple. I don't mind that much. What I'm interested in myself is enjoying my day of work here and developing my, uh, developing my knowledge and my skill as part of that enjoyment. There was a time where I was really big on the traditional and I just liked everything being forged all the time because I really liked forging. Now I just like making stuff. And if that means that I go to the TIG welder and I learn how to TIG weld and I incorporate that into a project, I'm happy. If that means that I'm at the anvil punching holes like I am right now, I'm happy. It's, 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 it's about enjoying the whole process, learning as much as possible. And uh, that's, that's my view on it. So it's a very broad, open, scattered, scattered opinion. Hope that helps. Here's another interesting technique for popping out a little hole if it's too weak to go into the back side. You go over a piece of wood through your countersunk hole with your small punch. The tiny little plug ends up in the hardwood and you end up with a, dare I say, rather a very clean hole. That's another way of doing it. I couldn't come into the back side because this material would have caved in. So we go over that piece of hardwood. It supports it lovelily. We're now ready to cut this off. Stenzel Iron asks a really, really good question, actually. Uh, he asks, has forging with a power hammer changed the way you forge with a hand hammer? And yes, I can unequivocally say absolutely 110% it has. It's made me much, much worse, a much poorer hand hammer smith um, than I was before. I am a lot worse with a hand hammer now that I use power hammers all the time. And uh, it's something I often have to pinch myself, give myself a little kick there to remind myself of how to be efficient with a hand hammer just because I'm so used to going to the power hammer and letting all that force uh, mean that I'd be a little less focused on technique. And it's silly and I need to work on that. And of course I'll touch mark it. So I'm now just gonna roll this over slightly. You know what I was saying about being uh, out of practice with a hand hammer? Quite evident right now. Struggling making the simplest little thing. Lucas the Gilbert asks, are you the supreme dab master? Well, um, we'll uh, bend that open. Nikki Eli Sutar asks, how did I build a, a, an audience or a following right at the very beginning? Well, right at the very beginning there, I guess I used Instagram and Facebook and a little bit of YouTube to start marketing the products that I was selling and the classes I was teaching at the time. And it was all very, uh, very unstructured, so yeah just the general social medias and obviously now we're all focused here on YouTube and everything else points to these videos so that we can hang out here and chat and have this wonderful conversation. So now we're gonna make our bend. And you see by having just the one full of the mark, it's gonna bottom out and it's gonna start bending just behind it, which is nice, because that's gonna establish some of the spacing that we need. 
I think I just need a slight curve in here downwards. I can do this by hammering with the round side of my hammer. Perfect. Hey. Just gonna clean it so it doesn't dirty my hat. And we're gonna go straight to the install. I don't wanna put any oil on there because I don't wanna have to end up getting oil on my hat in case it doesn't dry nice and nicely. So uh, into the truck we go. Righty ho. You look really comfortable, Jamie. I am very comfortable. Could you look any more like a pretzel right now? I've got a door sticking right in my back. <laughs> What are the odds of me losing these two little screws? About 99%. Okay, great. See, luckily I got this forged steel cap that you can get at alexsteelshop.com and it makes a perfect screw holder. You didn't know that. There's my middle. I got a cramp in my hip. Ow, 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 ow. I think we'll make it. I think we'll make it. Okay, I need to drill a hole and then we're gonna screw straight in. Hopefully my truck stays watertight. Go into my screw holder. Uh, we'll make sure it's nice and square. You gots to have your nice and square head holder, son. And we'll mark it. And we'll give it a tighten. Now would you look at that, we got ourselves a hat rack! And so ladies and gentlemen, now when I get in my truck, I've got my hat and I don't want to drive with it on my head. Bada bing bada boom, we've got ourselves a hat rack and that is just fantastic, doesn't it look so beautiful and it sits so perfectly. Thank you so much for watching this episode, been fantastic bringing you along. Can't wait to see you tomorrow on the next episode. Subscribe if you're new, we'll see you tomorrow. It's actually going to be today's episode, so have yourself a fantastic day and we will see you then. Ah. <laughs>